In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. I've been doing some <clears throat> Lenten reading uh, lately from, and I particularly, the, the book is from Father John Romanides, who was a, a theologian in, um, in America and then also in uh, Athens or Thessaloniki for a while at the, well, yes, I think the University of Thessaloniki. And then uh, he reposed in uh, uh, 2001. Um, Father John was known uh, for having a particular take theologically. Some people, or somebody in seminary told me he was the dirty Harry of, of Orthodox theology. You know, he didn't really pull his punches. And uh, one of the passages I came across that, that surprised me or made me think was uh, about superstition. And um, he lays it out in, in a unique way, um, but I'm going to veer away and just tell you that that's my source, where all this information comes from, and I'll just tell, tell it my way. Many people focus on, their entire focus of their Christian life is about getting to heaven. That everything is generally, I mean, that's the goal. And it's all about, in a sense, uh, what we, uh, when we come to church and the things that we do are all about essentially receiving the ticket into paradise, into, into heaven, so that we know where we're going after we die. There are other groups of people that, that are not so concerned necessarily about the great by and by or the, the future life that is to come, but are really focused solely on getting the benefits and the favors they need in this life. For instance, heavenly protection, uh, or a good job, or success or prosperity. And these two approaches, uh, this approach of uh, focusing on the great by and by, this idea that our entire Christian life is just about going to heaven. Again, in the scriptures, the Apostle Paul looks forward to receiving his crown. And we know that in the last days the goats will be separated and, and that there's a kingdom of heaven and then there's perdition. We understand that. But again, what I'm talking about is that a sole focus of the Christianity of, of going to heaven, of the great by and by, that everything we do is about this future life in the kingdom. The other uh, side was, again, those who uh, are more pragmatically concerned with everyday things. They're not worried about the future. They're worried about right now. And what are they worried about right now? That God would protect and bless me. That some, he would give me a guardian angel. That he would uh, be with me in my time of troubles and make it so that after my time of troubles I'd be well adjusted that he would somehow keep me from negative things and help me obtain positive things. And you can, as you look out, the, the vast majority of Christians in the world think this way. And what Father John says is this is all superstition. That this really is, although, again, God does protect us, and God is with us, and we can look to God in our time of trouble, and there's nothing wrong asking for protection or praying for people. But nonetheless, and remember I said, as a sole focus of our life, if we're just looking for the benefits, um, the blessings, so to speak, of an everyday God, well, this is, there's nothing very great about that. And Father John labels it superstition. And the word superstition, uh, uh, you know, the dictionary definition goes into supernatural causality. In other words, a lot of people, when bad things happen in their life, are wondering what they did wrong. What exactly did I did do, do wrong that caused this one bad thing? Because, again, if I was doing everything right, everything would be good, and God would protect me. But the minute I do something wrong, and uh, forgive me, I, I came from a church when I was a Protestant where the way this was preached, quite literally, was that God was the head of the mafia. <laughs> and that when you didn't do what he needed you to do, then he would send out his hitman to take care of you so you'd get in line. 
and it was embraced within that group, and I'm not embracing it in this sermon, that's, again, playing the lottery. That's superstition. Now, that might be very critical of my own faith and your own faith. Maybe you heard something that you do. Maybe you have thought about uh, Christianity this very way. And that's where we'll transition to today's gospel. In today's gospel, there's a man who four friends carry to Jesus, and as he's lowered in front of Jesus, uh, Jesus sees their faith, and it says, he says, son or child, your sins are forgiven you. The forgiveness of this man's sins um, could be rather obscure, but the teaching is very clearly that his sins are tied to his sickness. His sickness is tied to his sins. If he didn't have certain sins, he wouldn't have the sickness that he had. And so in healing and forgiving his sins, he was able in the same breath to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. And only in this particular gospel will say that sin and sickness are directly connected. That's not always the case. I mean, sin in a general way is fallen, and we're all sick and sinful, and we're all sick because of sins. But to say that everyone who has paralysis is because of their sins, that is not the case. But this is the case for this man. Now, they lowered him in front of Jesus for one reason. They wanted him to receive healing. He wanted him to receive healing. There was no mention of a great by and by, him going, simply going to heaven. There was no mention of, of uh, playing the system, so to speak, by doing everything right so that they would be blessed by God. What there is a mention of is that by their faith and that this was about healing, healing by the forgiveness of sins. And our faith is really about healing. If you want to say it's not about these manifestations and superstitions as, as Father John labels them, what is it about? Well, it's about healing. It's about growing in Christ by being healed, by having our sins forgiven. But ultimately, this pattern looks like within the patristic writings, the, the process of in the, the high theological words of purification uh, and, and deification. You know, purification, uh, there's three parts, and of course, you know, just like Perry in that, that election he was in, I forgot one of the most important ones, I'm sure. Um, uh, but you know, purification and, and then theosis. Sanctification, thank you. Purification, sanctification, and, and ultimately deification or theosis. All those terms have, uh, certainly, if you're deified or if you're made like Christ, which is what that essentially means, you will find yourself in the kingdom of heaven. Certainly, if you're sanctified and deified, you will also find yourself blessed by God. But again, the saints don't seek it out as simply God as the slot machine, or God as the giver of something who gives me special benefits only when I need him. And we see this a lot within orthodoxy and uh, just to relate a story, I, I occasionally have people come here who have lived in this area such a long time and have discovered very recently apparently how to use Google and that there's an Orthodox church here and have come not to receive Christ, not to necessarily be healed or grow in any sort of relationship, but so that I could bless their talisman so that I could do the priest magic on them and magically make it so whatever it is they're bringing is going to have healing powers and somehow make everything better even though they'll remain separate from Christ and his church. And that's why I say, and that's why Father John goes on to say, this is just superstition. God is not played like that. He is not a game. He is not someone you pop in and pop out on. He doesn't do magic tricks for you. He's not a circus act. The promises of the covenant, covenant in the Old Testament all have to do with being committed to that covenanted community. And yes, in the Old Covenant, there are blessings and curses. But in the New Covenant, under Christ, we realize he's laid down his life for us and that the, the, the path of the New Covenant is one of purification and sanctification 
and growth in Christ. And that always has to do with our healing. But we can't be healed if all we're looking for is magic tricks. We can't be healing if all we want is God to make our job feel better for us. Or God to fix this little situation with my kid. We certainly can't be healed if all we're worried about is this future life, which is very psychologically comforting because nowadays everyone goes to heaven. I haven't met anybody who's ever said that they were going to hell or knew somebody who was going to hell. It's very comforting to think about, but it has nothing to do and it doesn't create any energy for being healed in this life. And so this largely comes, again, from Father John and, and, his, and his language that he uses. And we will have, it doesn't matter why people come to our church, they can come for superstitious reasons or any reason they want, but we're glad to have them. As long as we all know that this is about our forgiveness, about our healing and our growing towards Christ. Because ultimately, in today's gospel, or whether we were to talk about St. Gregory, Palamas, or we were to talk about St. Simeon, the new theologian, whose feast day is today, it all was about their transformation. The how, in dedicating their life to Christ as they drew near to Him, they were convicted of their sins, they repented. And in their repentance, they were transformed. And over time, and over that process, they came to know the living God in a living and vital way. That is so much less cheap than asking for gifts and presents and, and uh, God, the great Santa Claus. And it's so much more than simply God, the one who will take us all into his bosom and make everything okay after I die. That it's active, it's in this life. And so, as we look at today's gospel and we contemplate these saints, let us assess ourselves. What am I in this for? Do I think I'm coming to church to appease the God who is like the mafia, as that one preacher said, and, and if I don't come to church, he's going to crack my knees? Or if I don't fast? Or if I don't pray? I feel guilty because I know I should, and that's what's right to do. Well, it's more than that. It's about our healing. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be integrated? Do you want to know Christ? Do you want to come close to God? These are the questions I have to ask myself and I ask you to ask yourself. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Yes.